parts, it leaves behind empty buildings. This happens all over the world. The thing is, in Geelong, they're not leaving them empty. I'm a researcher in architecture, heritage and media, and I'm fascinated by the social significance of buildings. In other words, I try to understand people's connections to certain places. Because as much as we shape buildings, buildings shape us. They outlast us and connect us across generations. This new library is superb. But I think how Geelong uses its old buildings will define its future. to Australian industry for close to 200 years. In fact, it's been nicknamed the Pivot. With the departure of manufacturing giants, Geelong's factories have been left vacant. And according to locals, it's inside old industrial buildings that a new story is being written. We've gone through multiple transformations in Geelong in its history and right now we're looking at a lot of industrial buildings that are being repurposed for creative futures like the paper mills in Finesford. Yeah and you've got the Federal Mills out in North Geelong completely redeveloped by Cameron Hamilton and you've got the Returned Soldier and Sailors Mills which is very much uh, the leader in this kind of redevelopment, have an amazingly diverse creative community out there and that's owned by a family trust. I can't wait to see these places. Great. a fascinating study, a living study, is the evolving tension between old and new, written into the spaces by the stories of people inside them. I've decided to start my exploration with a bang, or rather a boom. Boom Gallery began when art teachers Wren and Kate wanted to set up an art gallery. In six years, the business has exploded into a series of interrelated creative enterprises across the site of the old rs and mill. I had the idea of starting up an art gallery in Geelong yeah. and um, Suddenly, you start to think of well, what's an interesting building to sort of house that in, yeah. and you know, obviously, the old industrial buildings are what really caught our eye. It wasn't really part of a business plan to have studios or to have people renting sub, you know, sort of mm -hmm. subleasing spaces from us, but just the way it sort of happened, and it's actually created a really great community, a bunch of people down here. It's actually probably changed the whole street. We often think of industrial buildings as obsolete, grimy eyesores in our digital world, and yet for Boom industrial equaled potential. Uh, Kate and I are yeah. my business partner. When you first come down, it's, um, you're really coming down as a stranger mm. looking at an empty building. And, um, but now it's uh, home away from home, I suppose. And yeah. so it's a much closer relationship. I, I sort of, I know the building so much better, but it's not only the building. The building, to me, it actually represents a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Everything from the family who owns the building right through to the, to the managers that look after it on their behalf mm -hmm. and then to all my neighbours and uh, the people that are sharing the building with us. Uh, One of the most amazing parts of our business is the opportunity to introduce people to each other yeah. through the business. Yeah. So 
a lot of people know each other now that didn't know each other beforehand and a lot of them have an artistic or a creative bent. And rs and Mel seems committed to creativity. There are people devoted to dance, acting, yoga, graphics and video production, as well as commercial photography studio Cricket. Geelong, but it's always had a lot to offer. It's always been yeah. on the cusp. And I, if you look to other European cities and communities, you quite often see um, these creative melting pots, I suppose, yeah. an hour outside the CBD because rents were cheaper. So yeah, that's I, right. And you can get spaces like this. Yeah. You know, like this is amazing. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. There is a mindset sometimes, mm. like I'm still quoting on jobs in Melbourne and they'll be booking studios in East Brunswick. They'll be like, you don't have to do that. You can come yeah. down the highway. <laughs> and they still have this idea, oh, but that's really far. And it's, yeah. well, it's going to take you probably longer to get to, to East Brunswick. Yeah. yeah. I suppose TSC coming down and sort of equivalent yeah. um, have, have, have pulled large masses of people mm. from, from Melbourne down the highway. And I think to a certain extent, Melbournians are understanding this is, this is closer. With this amazing space attracting big clients from Melbourne, Cricket can also take opportunities to work with businesses in Geelong. The intention was for this to be more of a, I suppose, a creative hub full of people talking about um, small business, ideas about the creative aspects of small business, that we will have people who can help guide small business um, through what they need visually, whether that's content, mm -hmm. photographic content. Yep. We've got the video guys upstairs, Robo yep. Army. Who, who are wonderful mm -hmm. um, and you know, we've got graphic designers down the road we've got a whole bunch of people now mm -hmm. again because Boom's created spaces that can yep. house these people that we can sort of draw from and, and guide them as yeah. far as how to build the content they need so from that point of view this has been a godsend A clever and creative approach to the reuse of old buildings seems woven into the fabric of the RS and S mills. The mill has been here since the 1920s. At the corner of Rutland and Packington Streets on the northern bank of the Barwon River. R, S and S stands for Returned Soldiers and Sailors. and the mill was established after the First World War. Its mission was to employ local returned servicemen to make woolen blankets. Even from the street, you catch the hum of what might seem like ghosts of the mill's past. But I'm astonished to find that it isn't the past at all. Inside the building there is still a working mill. making high quality commercial textiles for clients around Australia. It's managed by Derek Brown and Duncan Collins. We mainly make fabrics for contract commercial markets, transport industry, uh, areas like university, common areas, hotel common areas. My dentist has it in his waiting room, my accountant has it in his waiting room. Yeah. And I make a point of telling people this was made in Geelong and people just don't believe that probably still made in Australia. Yes, it's actually made here. Yeah. Never died, mind in died, Geelong. Died, yeah. died, <laughs> died and finished here. Yeah. 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 So like, completely manufactured in the region. Like a G-Pack theatre here yeah. in Geelong. Yeah. And yeah, that has our fabric inside as well. This place was designed to be a, a weaving mill. It was built for the returned soldiers after the First World War for something for them to do. This industrial building is an example of living heritage. Its continued use by Geelong Textiles connects the past to the present. We're manufacturing fabric here and people are 
selling art and making mm. coffees and selling people cake and there's yoga studios and there's a rock climbing. So we're, we're doing it now. There's a diversification of all the different types of industries and galleries and shops here now. It's like part of what you grew up with, you know, mm. you'd come down here and you can go down to the river from, from the end of the street here, etc. and stuff. Um, the upside is that whatever happens to the building, they'll keep a lot of the outside mm. shape, etc. and stuff. The internals of it is, is nothing different from any other sort of warehouse, so it really doesn't matter, but, mm. but I think the Shire will make sure they keep the outside of the building you know, pretty much the way it is. Mm. I think what's inside does matter because it's this mix of creative and commercial activities that knits this place into the spirit of Geelong. The mill has been owned since 1985 by Ted and Wendy Dimmock. Ted ran the mill until he passed away. For Wendy, the site will always be an enormously significant place. We feel very... Um probably possessive of the building, <laughs> you know, you know, you know see, uh, because yeah. a lot of um, heartache, yeah. excitement, mm -hmm. uh, family, the children would come down, they'd work, some of the older ones would work at the school holidays sometimes to earn some pocket money mm -hmm. and so a lot of memories have gone into this building. Are there any particular the spaces in the building that are kind of key memories for you? Oh, well, one of my daughters would remember there was when we started using polypropylene mm -hmm. yarn, uh, it's what they call fluff right. in, the, in the making of it. Yes. And it's like um, cotton wool, but very light. Yeah. So there would be one particular part that was full of this fluff and she would come down with a girlfriend and they would play and burrow through it and make tunnels and just have the best time. Memories like these are what invest buildings with social significance. Wendy's passion for the building has led the family to share it with Geelong's creative industries. There's so many talented people in Geelong, mm -hmm. in the creative arts, there really are, and it's lovely that they've got a little uh, area where they can just ply their own creative uh, passion, I suppose. Yeah. And um, we're happy about that, to be a creative hub. Yeah. is I think is lovely. I personally see the future of Geelong uh, with uh, education and the arts. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very good university. Uh, there's a lot of creative people. We've got good theatre now. Uh, we have a wonderful Costa Hall for the, for the MSO to come down to. Great gallery that needs to expand desperately. <laughs> and a wonderful, wonderful new library. Yes. Building that's won an award. What do you think of the library? Do you like it? Well, I, I do. It's like a cracked egg. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think every city needs a piece of architecture that is a little bit controversial. Yes. Because it makes people talk and think. Yep. And I think that's great to create that sort of vibe. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people hate it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's fabulous. And what it's done is it's attracted people back to the library. Yeah. The library is booming and because it's next door to the gallery, people are going, oh, we'll just pop into the gallery. And so the gallery is booming with, with, with visitors. And so it's how they all play off each other. Yeah. They it's just amazing. What I've found at the RS and S mills is inspiring. It's an extraordinary example of how old industrial sites can be so much more than bricks and mortar. Next, this site is 28,000 square metres with dozens of individual buildings all in need of attention. Whoa, I never knew this was here. It just went boom overnight. How many local startups can you fit in one vast revitalised venue? My name's Benedict Uslak. I'm the CEO of the Geelong Chamber of Commerce. 
Geelong for me has a very personal connection. Of course, it's the place that I've lived and grown up all my life. Moved here when I was um, the age of three, uh, when my family moved to Geelong, uh, because of the Ford Motor Company, actually. Geelong at that time was really a, a large town and uh, now it's a city. It's a global city. It's, it's a city that has worldwide recognition and it's one that is now attracting so many people to live in this wonderful region. Uh, the lifestyle in, in Geelong is so fantastic. We have a beautiful bay, a north facing bay. We have the, the ocean, um, surf beaches, we have bush, we have all of the, the beautiful natural environment around us. Our business community is very strong. We have something like 16,000 businesses in Geelong and of those businesses, many are competing on a global stage. We have the national headquarters of a lot of organisations in Geelong now. We have the National Disability Insurance Agency is here. We have the headquarters for WorkSafe, Transport Accident Commission, and of course we have a great university in Deakin University. And Deakin itself is a global institution. It's leading the way in so much, really making headlines globally. So Geelong is really the epicentre for a lot of um, innovation, a lot of change. Geelong for me is a very special place because it really does resonate the wonderful lifestyle but also the, the ability to really be what you want to be.